G'day there guys, so today we're looking at this new radio from Quan Cheng. This is the TK115. This radio is packing a lot of features and we're going to have a look at some of those today. If you are interested in picking up one of these radios then there is a link in the description below. So obviously this is the main unit of the radio and it's similar in design to their previous popular Quan Chang radio, that being the UVK5 that sort of took um, the amateur radio and other com radio communities by storm a couple of years ago with its open source uh, firmware that you could load on it and all that sort of thing. Very, very similar layout, although it feels a little bit more rugged. The buttons are definitely feel a lot more rugged. Same sort of screen, um, when we power it on, I'll show you that it's pretty much the same sort of layout. The battery that comes with it here, it does have a USB socket here on the back, USB-C socket for charging with a little LED indicator. All over, these, uh, all over the materials is this um, monkey or this Kong. Uh, I think the TK stands for Taiko Kong. I think that means boss. Uh, so Quan Chang Boss Kong. So uh, they've got that imprinted here on the back of the battery. As far as the specs are concerned, there's the model number, a BP6828SF. It's a 7.4 volt battery, 2500 milliamp hour, 18.5 watt hour battery. Pretty lightweight, pretty small. Spot in here for the belt clip to go in. The radio itself, stamped here on the back, is the TK11. Uh, output says less than 10 watts. Frequency here on the back is 136 to 174 and 400 to 470. It's actually missing a couple of things here. This can actually transmit on 10 meters and 6 meters as well. And I'm going to show you the output powers and everything uh, a little bit later on. There's the FCC ID, XBPTK11. And it comes in this green box. This is a little bit of a upgrade from their previous packaging, which was just a small little cardboard gray box. Here on the front, saying some of the uh, features of this radio, and we'll go over some more of them in a moment. Dual receiving, there was a little bit of uh, discussion around whether this thing is full duplex. I've tested it and it's not. In other words, you can't transmit while you're listening at the same time, at least not that I've found out, unless there's some sort of hidden setting in here that I'm not sure about. Multiband transmitting and receiving. It supports AM, SSB and FM receiving. So it'll do SSB and AM receiving. So that's quite a big thing. Universal smart code breaking. Don't know really much about that. High power, NOAA. Um, so that's the weather. So it's got a spectrum analyzer built into it now. Magic voice, infant like alien voice, okay act as a frequency meter. Um, it's not really like a, a you know, like a standard uh, lanyard. It's actually this um, interesting, nine, since 1984, Quan Chang, uh, what do you call these? I don't know what you call these. Oh, I thought it might've been retractable. No, it's not, you can just take that off. So that's, that's a bit of a, a difference compared to what you normally get. This is the first little interesting thing to me. This is a little antenna. Now, on the back of it here, it's stamped frequency range. I'm not sure if you can see that. 0 0.153 to 18 megahertz. So this radio has a massive frequency coverage range. And let me just show you that in the manual, what the frequency coverage ma uh, range is of this uh, radio. It's got several different frequency bands. And these are the transmit frequencies now. From what I've seen, I've got the normal version. So I've got a transmitting uh, range of 25 to 29.8 megahertz, 50 to 54 megahertz, 136 to 174 megahertz, and 350 to 490 megahertz. And there's the power levels um, indicated there. Now, not only that, it'll receive apparently all the way down to 0 0.153 megahertz to 1.8 megahertz, then 1.8 to 18 or 17.8 megahertz, then there's a little gap, 18 to 32 megahertz. Then F4, 32 to 76 megahertz. 108 to 135, 136 to 174, 174 to 350, 350 to 400, 400 to 470, 470 to 580, 580 to 760, 580 to one gig, and then 
F13 1 gig to 1160. So it stops short, just short of 23 centimeters. You'll see here too that it's got a three and a half millimeter plug. It's a mono uh, plug, which is a little bit strange. I haven't really seen this uh, before on a radio. That actually plugs into the top here of the radio and your receive antenna is there on the front. Now, I haven't pulled this apart. I don't know what's in it. I guess it's a couple of coils or something that's in there. But I mean, maybe you could use this for some sort of RF direction finding and and local noise source, but I probably wouldn't rely on receiving much with this. There is the antenna. This is the transmitting antenna. Now on the bottom of this, it does have a transmit frequency of 50 to 54, 136 to 174, and 400 to 480. You'll see here that there's this big whip bit on the end. That's for the six meter portion, the six meter loading portion. So you can use this to transmit on six meters, uh, two meters, and 70 centimeters and it won't this antenna won't do 10 meters so you're going to have to find your own antenna to be able to transmit on 10 meters okay turning it on Welcome frequency mode. so it gives us our little uh quan chang lady there which is the same as the uvk5 very similar same sort of screen layout the one thing that i will say is is that i don't have this turned up very loud but the button levels are incredibly loud so you might want to turn that down you can see that there's two vfos so as default it comes in memory mode um, the this thing is so new um, at the time of this recording of the video that i don't reckon chirp actually supports this but um, quanchang probably have software on the website to be able to program this for memory channels but if we click vhf uh, sorry vm for vfo and memory modes you can switch here between the two uh, receivers here, the top and the bottom. They've also got this signal level meter here that they've got, so A and B. As far as navigation, everything is reasonably similar to the UV K5s. If you go into the menu though, however, they've now structured the menu system under submenus. So you've got general uh, here, so you can go into general and select, you know, basically your battery saving things, your beeps. Um, let's just turn that beep off because it's rather annoying. You can turn the voice on and off. Uh, mic levels. Channel. Channel is a big one where you can select your squelch level, uh, steps, TX power, the CTCSS, and there's actually a little quirk with these CTCSSs as well. So they've got a transmit receive CTCSS, which applies to both. They've got a receive CTCSS DCS, which applies to just the receiver and the transmit one. The transmit one is the one that you would use the most to be able to access repeaters and all that sort of thing. Now, when I came in here, uh, first of all, I went to select a frequency and it had null. And I would just hit menu and went to change it and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. And I'm like, oh, why has it not got CTCSS? I had to look in the manual. You actually have to press hash to select what you want if it's ctcss dcs or what you're after so there i've selected ctcss there's 67 hertz and now i can select whatever frequency i'm after for ctcss uh, five takes you to the weather NOAA weather channels which are already programmed in so you've got quick access there six that is high low um, and medium so you can adjust the power levels there zero takes you into the FM portion of the band. Seven is actually a spectrum analyzer. Now, I've not had an awful long look at this, but you know, I could sort of see a little bit of a noise floor. There's a signal level there. It's doing some scans. I'm not quite sure how beneficial this is, but it's there anyway. Uh, there is MOD, modulation. This is where you change between AM, uh, FM. There's LSB and USB, if I actually turn it up. It's actually silent on two meters, and I'm wondering whether USB is not supported on VHF and UHF and only HF, because you can hear something um, on those lower bands. If you try to transmit, it just says disable, so it won't transmit in USB mode. To be able to put in a frequency directly, you have to go into VFO mode and click the uh, hash button here, and then you can enter in a frequency directly. So I'm just gonna put in 
the repeater frequency of my local six meter repeater. And then I go to menu and I go to the channel menu. And let's go to find the offset. Offset is set to one megahertz. So you can press menu and you can enter this in. Now, if you press one, it's gonna put in like a hundred megahertz, which you don't want. So you need to start with a zero and enter it in that way. Um, now we need to select the shift direction. I think I've just gone the wrong way as well. CTCSS, shift, negative. So now we're gonna transmit on 52.525, let's do that. So you can hear there that I keep my repeater. Now I'm inside here in the building, so it's probably not a really good signal, especially on this little whippy antenna. The audio actually sounds reasonably good. One of the things that I did listen to was to the uh, aircraft band on 118 megahertz to my local aircraft. Compared to the UVK5, I think that it sounds a lot better. Hobart Thermal Information November, expect RMP Tango approach runway 30, display threshold in operation. Wind 330 degrees, 12 knots. Visibility greater than 10 kilometers. Cloud skew 4500. Temperature 22. QNH 1012. On first contact with Hobart Ground Tower or approach, notify receive of November. So let's have a listen now of what the audio sounds like on FM. Testing 1234, VK7HH. Testing 1234 on 146.525 with the Quanchang TK11. Now let's test the audio on air and see what it sounds like. VK7HH testing 12345. Audio level is pretty good. VK7HH testing 12345. Now I was very curious whether I could actually key my 10 meter repeater. So I've got it all ready to go here. I've actually plugged in my HF antenna outside. Let's see if I can. Oh, there you go. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought. And that was even on low power. So this is, uh, I'm just listening. I found a conversation here, reasonably strong conversation on 20 meters. This is what it sounds like. This is on upper sideband on 20 meters. Now that's sounding pretty good. That's uh, surprising. Now, I've got a bit of a, a dodgy connection going on here, but then I've got a PL259 going here into a BNC, into an RCA, into a three and a half millimeter jack to get it into the, the radio. But it works, and I mean, I can hear people on SSB, which is quite surprising. Okay, power test on 29600. Let's key up, that is on high power, 4.55 watts. On medium power, we have 2.06 watts. And on low power, we have 0 0.82 or 83 watts. Six meters, 4.4 watts on high power. On low power, uh, sorry, medium power, we have 1.0 nine watts and on low power we have 0 0.782 watts 146.500 on two meters we have 7.7 .7 watts so it's starting to go up here that is on high power on medium power we have just a tad over four watts and on low power we have 0 0.655 watts and on 70 centimeters for 40 megahertz, we have high power of nearly eight watts. 
Medium power is 3.95 watts. And low power of 0.76 watts. Now for those that are wondering, does it transmit on 220? No, it doesn't. At least not out of the box. Now for those wondering, for GMRS on 462, 550 on high power, it does do 7 watts out on high power. On medium power, it does 4.4 watts. And on low power, it does just under a watt. So this is a tiny SA that I can use to measure the spurious emissions, harmonics and power levels of radios. So I've just got my handheld hooked up here through an attenuator. You can pick up these tiny SA's pretty easily and cheaply. They're a great piece of equipment to have in the ham radio shack. Uh, there's a link below if you want to uh, check uh, one of those out and grab one of those for yourselves. So let's do our first test on 29.6 megahertz. So we're doing our first test to have a look at our harmonics and there's quite a few here. Starting at zero hertz here on the left and all the way up to about 260 megahertz. You can see that we've got a spur here, uh, well sorry, no, our fundamental number one, we've got a spur here with our second harmonic and which is above our blue line. So our blue line is what we're aiming for at minus 16 dBm. So everything should be under that. So our second harmonic's above that. Our third harmonic's pretty much sitting right on it or just below it. Our fourth harmonic is above, fifth harmonic is above, sixth harmonic is above, seventh is sitting just below, and our eighth harmonic is just above. So uh, it's a little bit dirty on 29. 0.6 megahertz on 10 meters. Let's now have a look at six meters. Second harmonic is above, third harmonic is above, fourth, fifth, sixth is below, seventh is above, eighth is below. So uh, reasonably similar to 10 meters, a little bit better, but reasonably similar in the fact that we've got quite a few harmonics that are above our line that we need it to be at at minus 16 dBm. Now let's go and have a look at two meters. Transmitting here on 146.500, there's our fundamental here. Our second harmonic is sitting yeah, just above, just above the line, a couple of dB above. Our third harmonic is sitting a couple of dB above as well, up here in 400 megahertz range. And this is what UHF looks like. So I'm here transmitting on 440 megahertz and we're all the way up to two gigs here and there is pretty much no harmonics, nothing um, above that that is worrying us at all. I'm not quite sure if it's open source or if there's any development out there similar to the K5, so maybe there might be some improvement there. I know that in the old UV K5, they put like a mod board in here so that it would receive HF a lot better. Could possibly arrive in this, who knows. I've done a whole heap of videos on the other Quan Chang radios and in fact just other Chinese cheap radios as well. Now if you want to watch those, they are in full over here in this playlist. You can check those out and uh, again there's a link in the description for this radio below.